Okay, good morning, everybody. It's the 16th of June, and we haven't had Garden Club since March. That's very depressing. Um, we miss you all. We miss having meetings. We miss having socializing, and we certainly miss the speakers. Everybody that I've talked to has said they're really keeping busy in their garden, and uh, I haven't been as busy in my garden as I would like, but I've certainly managed to accomplish a little bit. Uh, we've lived here for 12 years and it'll be 12 years in August. And this whole front bed over there, which you can look at later on, was completely grown in. We did not even know that there was a stone wall in there when we bought the house. And we were unpacking one day and my husband said, I need to be outside. And he came out here and started digging and called me to come and see his piles of yard waste. And I said, is that a wall? And he said, yes, it is. And we did not know that that was a, that was a wall. Anyway, this has sort of been my, my fun bed for the last few years, and I think I'm sort of getting it to the point where I really like it. Um, a number of these things came from the Garden Club. Uh, the grass back there, and I have no idea what it's called, came from the Garden Club. The daisy patch, that's Esther Reed daisies, they came from the Garden Club. This green plant here and that yellow one with the white flowers also came. I don't know what they are, but they are perennials and they keep coming back and they look pretty. I'm a <coughs> big fan of the uh, clover, the um, oxalis plants. I have two different kinds. I've got the um, purple leaved one and then the green leaf with the purple center that has the pink flowers and I'm very partial to those. Um, hellebores in the background there. Um, I planted most of those and uh, I'm not very good at maintaining them but they are fun to have because they stay green all winter which is great. So the lilies back here um, were right along the front here because when I purchased them they were told I was told they were a border lily and they would not get to be more than eight inches to a foot tall. Needless to say that was a lie <laughs> so I hauled them all out last year and moved them back so that they would have a little bit of a space. They are unfortunately, um, I used to have a lot of gladiolas and they seem to be crowding out the gladiolas a bit so uh, I'm gonna have to redo the gladiolas I guess. And um, let me see, what else can I tell you? Um, lots of irises, lots of ferns. The ferns were here when we came for the most part although we have planted a few of them um, and uh, we sure love them because they're again green all winter and uh, it's really enjoyable to have a have something that's here all winter. So yeah that's pretty much my front yard. <laughs> Calla lily, a lot of my plants have been gifted or um, like my neighbor across the uh, next door there is really good with calla lilies. So she's given me a number of calla lilies, those ones there. And then over on the far north side, I have two huge calla plants, which my neighbor two doors that way gave me. And she's, she's wonderful. She's a great neighbor to have because she does, um, if she decides she doesn't like something after a year, she takes it out and she often gives it away. So I have... Um, two or three rose bushes that I've gotten from her, plus the callus, and she's always offering me shrubs and bushes and other things, so it's been pretty funny. Nice. And uh, unfortunately, my help, my um, hostas over there, the, they're really nice now, but the minute that they flower, the deer come, so. And the blue one is my favorite. Isn't that pretty? Blue ones. Yeah. yeah, there's actually another one under that poppy uh, there, but the poppy appears to have taken over. Yeah, so I, you know, I just let it because it wasn't. It was an old, old, old um, hosta, yeah. um, and I, I moved it from the backyard the first year we were here, and it's really never done very well. It's kind of too old, I think, and uh, yeah. So it's been, it's been taken over by a poppy, and I kind of like it. Th this, this is some th my when I say one of my two rose beds, and it's this is suddenly has become the yellow rose bed. I don't quite know why. That's actually a pink one. Um, it's called a Morden Blush, and it's gotten very. Um, it got really attacked by the rain, so I had to practically cut everything off of it. And that's a Desmond Tutu, which is uh, red, and again, nothing. So, yeah. <laughs> and this is my was a really good lily bed. It seems to be not doing as well this year, but um, that's okay. Um, and then over here, two out of three of these big plants have come from the garden club. Uh, that's a, I think that's an Astrantia, and that's a Pulmonaria. 
and uh, the one in the middle is a, a same bush that we have out front. And for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. It has beautiful blue flowers, and the bees absolutely love it. And it, it's an Australian bottle brush. The uh, Garden Club had a whole bunch of them that got donated by somebody one day, and uh, I bought a couple of them. They haven't done much. I thought actually this year they were going to flower, and my uh, the fellow that did my uh, watering system said it was some kind of a disease, so he said cut it off. <laughs> so I did. But um, I don't know which what are the that's supposed to be a climbing rose. Um, and it doesn't climb, it just sort of sits there, which is fine. That's a Julia Child, which I love. It's probably one of my favorites. This is, like I say, this is my second rose bed, and I have no idea what any of these are. The reason being, um, the gal who, when we moved in here that lived next door, had planted, she'd gone out and bought a whole mess of roses and planted them, and they were beautiful. But on the other side of the, that house was a vacant lot full of deer. And she said, uh, I think it was the second year we were here, she said, came over and said to me, do you want roses? And I said, uh, sure, why not? I'm thinking that she would give me a bouquet or maybe a plant. Well, she came in with a, a wheelbarrow full of bare root roses. She dug them all up and uh, said, here, have them. So I've planted um, that one I, I bought and the one behind is another uh, free one from the lady down the street. Everything else at the front here are ones that that uh, that uh, Virginia gave me. I, like I say, I have no idea what they are. This one is probably one of my favorites. Um, I'll walk into the dirt here. Um, the buds start out being almost orange, and then they turn um, as they get sort of an orange pink, and then they turn orange, and then when they're open up, they turn pink, and then they turn orange again. So I happened to have one one day um, at a, a, a parlor show, and Anne, um, Anne Friedan told me, -like. yeah, she thought it was a Joseph's coat. So any time I've put a, a, a flower into the parlor show, I've called it that. And one of the um, judges, the last time I put roses in, put a big question mark beside it. So I don't know. I trust Anne. So yeah. I'm assuming that she's probably not lying to me, but there you go. So, so this is my, my veg, one of my vegetable patches. Uh, I got my tomatoes here, all garden club tomatoes. Um, I've got a cauliflower and two cauliflower and two broccoli over there, uh, which were not garden club. And Janet, you might recognize the lovage do. plant. Yes. That was a gift from Janet. And uh, as I say, this apple tree some years is, does beautiful stuff and some years it doesn't. Last year we didn't get any apples at all. This year we, the year before we had dozens. So who knows? I'll wait and see what happens this year and see if it's different. Lots of birds nesting. We think we have a dove nest in the uh, cedar tree there. That's very cool. And uh, you'll notice these little ferny things here. I had to, I took one in one day to the garden club and I asked, I think it was Sandy DeLuca, and she says it's a bracken yes. fern. Yeah, and they just pop up all over the place. I have to kind of tear them out in a lot of spots, but uh, yeah, look yeah they, I, I'm quite happy with yeah, them. Yeah, they grow into my neighbor's yard and he doesn't seem to mind. So it's my raised bed that my husband built for me and uh, garlic is coming. I would say I'm getting some scapes so I can probably in about a month pick some garlic, I hope, with any luck. And then two different kinds of lettuce. This is Benita's lettuce. Yes. This is commercial lettuce. Um, the peppers in the background, the small plants, I got from um, the St. John's Church plant sale. Uh, Lynn Walker's daughter, yes. uh, Fran, runs that, so I bought some stuff from her. Um, some of the cucumbers are from her. And the sunflowers, which I'm, they were sunflower sprouts, and I unfortunately didn't catch them to eat as sprouts. So I uh, planted them, and I'll see if they turn into anything other than just leaves. Will be interesting to see. And there at the back by the red uh, grid is my pea plants, which I got from Fran as well, and they've done. <laughs> they were cute, but not so much. And then in the front here, I have, um, two, I think, or three zucchini plants. I have um, two 
uh, spaghetti squash and two butternut squash, both of which I'm very fond of. I've got um, four eggplant, uh, two Japanese, one globe, and one green eggplant plant, which I found. I've never seen it, heard of it, so I thought I would give it a try. And uh, see some cucumbers there. And then over here, I just kind of gravitated back to flowers. And uh, that's blueberries. I've never had a blueberry, but I'm hoping this year that I might get one. And I've, I'm loving this uh, salvia, which has just kind of taken off in the last year. It's only two years old. So I like it so much, I planted some blue spire salvia in the back. So I'll wait and see if that comes back as much. This is my, my danger zone. Those are Japanese lanterns. And uh, they are extremely invasive, I've discovered. But um, they're pretty, so I've still got them. But I have to, um, like they originally started with one plant back there, and it's just migrated, so I have to pull out anything I don't want. And I'm thinking this year, at the end of this season, I'm going to get down there. They have these long roots that just travel. I'm thinking this year I may have to go down there and and uh, dig them out and see if I can start to reduce the number. Put it in a pot. <laughs> well, that's where I got it. It was in a pot originally. So, and, and we've we've discovered that heucheras are our new thing, uh, coral bells. So we've planted quite a few different heucheras in the yard. We're enjoying that quite a bit. And our Japanese maple, which we love, and another uh, rose bush. That's a. Um, Graham Thomas, uh, a David Austin rose, the uh, old kind. And it, um, it does crazy things. Like I, I cut it way, way back one year after it bloomed, thinking I would probably have killed it. And about three weeks later, I came out and it had all come back with many, many more. There you go. Who knew? Okay, um, there was absolutely nothing here but weeds when we first moved into the house. Um, there was um, a tree there. I can't remember what it was. We had it taken down because it was not in very good shape. Um, and we had, um, back in here, we had a huge big old um, pine tree that was encroaching on our roof. And we watched it one day, it was belonged to our neighbor. We watched it one day in a windstorm and the whole thing was moving and we just thought, no. So we had it taken down and we had behind where Ed is, um, three old dogwood trees that had died. And so we had those taken down as well. And the nice thing about that is now we have sun here. We don't have a lot of sun, but we had none at all back here. It was just totally dark and cold back here. So our plan is to try and make this kind of, Lindsay said to make it a woodland garden, which now that we have no woodlands, it'll be what it is. And uh, we're hoping to, in the summer it's very hot up on our patio. We're hoping to kind of put a table and a couple of chairs, you know, flatten this out a bit and have a table and a couple of chairs in here. So that's been kind of a, a fun thing to plan and work on. So I've been putting shady, summery type plants in here and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So we've, uh, way back, way, I think you were probably still in the garden club. It was at, you were in the garden club. It was back when Ann Pope was on the, the um, she was on the parlor show committee with me and she gave me these and I kind of put them in stuck the pots back here and forgot about them and about two years later I think so yeah, yeah. I, they've never done much of anything and the, somebody's eating them but they're green so it's all good and then this is a say from the garden club um, the spireas we're trying to get some color back here and then yeah. the callas again from my neighbor yeah. so that's been good and these two astilbes mm -hmm. just this year have decided and they've been in there five years and they've just this year decided they're going to do something. So I'm thinking I, I, I'm scared to, but that one, um, the Pyrrhus is starting to encroach on that one a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I need to move it. I can't move the Pyrrhus, so. Yeah. So I'll be interested to see if it survives being moved. Yeah. Yeah. This is a hibiscus. hibiscus, thank you. It's a Rose of Sharon which is a type of hibiscus. It's not really a hibiscus. That was here when we moved in. The irises 
were volunteers. They were here. Everything, all of the irises, I have not planted one iris. They've all um, moved in here. Um, I got motivated a couple of years back seeing Benita putting Solomon's seal plants, so I bought one. <laughs> it's doing okay. Um, again, the calla from my neighbor. And the, we put the pyrrhuses in um, probably 10 years ago and they're happy, happy, happy. Interestingly enough, the two hydrangeas that are there, when we first moved here, um, this one was way over, the smallest one was way overgrown and huge. So we cut it right back thinking we'd killed it. And it's come back even better. This one is, starting to get to the point where like Doug is really good about cutting cutting them back and uh, yeah he's done a good job with uh, with keeping them back and another uh, hibiscus down there so it's been uh, it's been a, a a slice of life getting this garden organized we were told by the neighbors that the people who we bought from they didn't garden at all which is why we had this thing that was just um, a mess and uh, we were told that what they did was about every 10 days her husband would come out and run literally around with the lawnmower <laughs> and that was it that was all they ever did 10 days every 10 days so uh, it was it was quite fun to be able to you know to kind of come in with a clean slate if I had known how much work this big yard was going to be, I probably would have done some rethinking about it. But we're, um, what, what we're trying to do at this point is get it to the point where it is mostly perennial. And then um, we'll go from there with the annuals. Okay. All right, so uh, these beds, these ones running up the side of the driveway, they're a work in progress, and I think they always will be. Um, we're working on trying to find ways to replace the, the beams so that everything doesn't completely collapse. But uh, this is, uh, as I say, this whole garden is considering a work in progress. I'd like to uh, thank Ed and Janet for coming down and doing a a bit of a video of me. I'm sorry, I'm not exactly the most photogenic person in the world, but it'll do. Great. I've had a haircut, so <laughs> it's all good. And um, it's Jane, president. Lovely to, see, to uh, see some people from the Garden Club. I think we've managed to keep our social distancing and uh, we will try and keep you informed of anything that's going on with the, with the reopening of hopefully Winspear in the next couple of months. We're hoping to be back in in September, but we never know. So over to you. Thank you. Hi. It's a parlor show, Janet. It's nice to see you all. Uh, like Jane said, Ed and I are filming some of the Garden Club members' gardens just so we can say hello and see what they're up to, as well as some other gardeners we know in the area that have quite remarkable gardens. Um, I hope you recognize me with my COVID hair. I get a Chelsea chop in two days. I'm looking forward to it. This is my front yard. Um, we put uh, deer fencing up this year because I wanted to see what kind of tulips I was growing because I never get to see them. A lot of them turned out to be yellow which is not allowed in my yard so they've been ripped out and I'll be planting new ones. <laughs> um, as you can see I've got a few tomatoes in here and my prize uh, David Austin rose which always does well and um, you missed the blooming but I have three um, flowering almonds from my mom's garden and they're just spectacular they're like a, a just a spike of pink flowers all the way up the stem it's like a fountain of pink flowers in the spring and um, it's not blooming right now unfortunately and I need to cut these things back and they will flower and come up again all these geraniums and um, my Himalayan or I think this is a Himalayan uh, honeysuckle uh, that a friend gave me does very well here and we um, put this little bed in just to grow things that the uh, the deer don't like so we've got onions here I threw in a couple of potatoes that looks like maybe the deer nibbled on them um, and uh, some pumpkins and squash that I've I've just started to to protect and hopefully once they get big enough the uh, uh, the deer won't be able to bother with them over there I've got Grace Ward in May. It's just a blanket of blue. You can only see a few flowers left right now. I call it Blue Mod, but it's actually called Grace Ward. And uh, behind you, Ed, is uh, 
is our blue spruce, which was given to me by my sister when my kids were toddlers. So it was only uh, a few feet tall, and now it is, I don't know, at least 30 feet tall. I love it. It's one of my favorite trees. tree it's my favorite um, and then I just a couple years ago planted a Rosa Ragosa got it from the club and uh, it bloomed this year and I've just cut it back so that it hopefully will bloom again I just put this in here this is a new current kind of spirea apparently it uh, uh, the color attracted me um, it doesn't drop seeds everywhere that's what's new about it there's a whole bunch of spireas like this that are kind of a dusty rose color it growing in the um, Brentwood Bay boulevards on the main street there and this one the color is just uh, very vibrant and apparently the, the bees love it and apparently it's deer resistant so I'm very hopeful for it uh, here again we've put up the deer fencing we have a couple of has caps here that uh, just I don't know how they're gonna do we had the most fabulous blueberries in here that got a virus that you can't do anything about so I had to rip the the blueberries out we'd had them for years they were huge producers I got sick of picking blueberries and now I just feel bad about that because now I have none so we planted these has caps in the hopes that uh, they would not catch the same disease but um, the people down the road there at the plant health uh, were no help at all they have no clue if they'll catch the same disease so it's uh, it's an experiment I don't have any berries this year um, because I think they bloomed late and there were no bees or anything so they didn't get they didn't get pollinated um, I think what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to beef up this this uh, area, the soil, and put my tomatoes in here because it gets great exposure and I'll be able to uh, cut them off with the deer fencing. My tomatoes are, as you'll see in the back, are not doing as well as I had hoped this year because uh, I've been uh, neglectful in the, in the beetle situation. So uh, there, apparently these beetles are in the soil, so I'm thinking if I plant my tomatoes up here next year, Year, maybe I can alleviate this that problem so anyway that's my front yard let's go to the backyard and take a look at the veggies in the pool right. well here we are in the backyard and uh, my neighbor's having her lawn weed whacked and cut so you know I'll speak up um, my husband scrapes and uh, he takes care of those and I make raisins out of them after Ed told me about that and, and they're fabulous uh, behind you can see I've got two raised beds that are full of raspberries I get tons of raspberries they do fabulously over there. The last bed I just have some uh, romaine growing in. Nothing really grows well there so I have uh, kale and uh, some some of my herbs growing back there. And then uh, here is a new bed we put in this year because Anne, Anne of course and Benita have uh, uh, just been tantalizing me with all their asparagus. So we put an asparagus bed and um, it's doing quite well and we won't be picking any anytime soon. We'll give it three years like they suggest before we actually pick any of the spears so we're letting those get good and uh, good and established. And uh, here's my, my little greenhouse where I do start some plants. It does not get great exposure here so I tend not to uh, grow much in there. Uh, we are putting a greenhouse we've ordered um, in the front yard next year. We have it. We just have to clear the, the grass out and flatten the flatten the, an area to put it in. And we'll have potatoes and a larger veggie veggie population in the front yard as well next year. So that's my little greenhouse. I have a couple of tomato plants in there, and I do do all my starts in there. And then here's my... Um, rhubarb patch with all the peas in the background. Um, I had a great uh, rhubarb patch before the pool came along and then I just had no luck no matter where I put my rhubarb. So my friend, one of my friends said just put a box around it Janet. So I put a box around it this year and uh, this is the first year it's been here and I did the same as I always do. I give them uh, manure when they first start coming up, a composted manure and then I've put a lot of compost in there since then and it's just it's just taken off. So I'm not sure if it's because it likes it in this particular spot or if it really does need the box but I'm going to continue with the box. 
Um, I have two different kinds of peas growing here. They're both heritage. One is a shorter variety, which is the pea pods. And I think that's the one in the front here that hopefully it'll get some pods. It's got lots of flowers. And the one behind is a very tall heritage version that the pods get quite long, six inches long apparently, and it grows uh, eight, eight feet tall six to eight feet tall. So I'm hoping if it gets that high, it'll grow over with the beans. I grow nothing but Fortex Filet uh, pole beans. Um, you don't get the lovely f red flowers, but the Fortex Filet does not get tough or stringy, even if it gets quite long. Um, the Geritol Gardener, our good friend, Bill uh, suggested to grow these kind, and I've never grown anything since then. Some borage here I, s I started from seed. Apparently you can make tea out of the, the leaves and the flowers are fabulous for bees. I've been planting a lot of things that attract the bees because I'm worried about bees. After seeing our lovely bee lady speak last last year, she inspired me. So the trick with the borage is to pick off the flowers when they're done so that they don't seed and get everywhere because as Ed knows, it's a plant that likes to grow everywhere. Uh, and then here are my beans and I have a couple of squash back here, butternuts and my zucchini uh, is actually got a nice zucchini on there this long. <laughs> so these are, this is my, um, my strawberry bed um, and uh, I replaced everything last year with a variety called totem because it grows on a long stem that comes up like this so that your, your strawberries aren't in the dirt because I had a problem with the lizards eating all my strawberries and once they hit the dirt they're in there like a dirty shirt eating all your strawberries. Um, I don't think they taste quite as good as the Cuthbert and I can't remember the other variety I had before but you know they're nice and big they're a good color. Um, I'm having a better success with getting getting strawberries that haven't been eaten or destroyed by falling in the dirt so I'm quite happy with that. So once they produce I will fill the rest of the bed up with them. Um, back here I've got my cucumbers coming up. I planted some pack choy or bok choy that I bought the other day back here. I'm hoping it'll be shady enough for them. A couple of uh, um, sunflowers for the uh, finches that the uh, squirrels started for me in pots in my deck. Thank you squirrels. And um, I, you, you'll see this plant here and there in my garden. It's a fever few. It comes up here and there. It's easy to pull out if it's not some, somewhere you want it. It stinks. It's horrible smelling thing. It has white flowers on it, but the black flies love it as you can see. So it's a black fly magnet so they stay off your other plants and once they get really scary and ugly, because I've got another little one starting here, I'll just rip that up and get rid of it and goodbye bugs and there'll be another one to attract them. So as you can see, um, um, I've got some of my tomatoes here in big pots. I have not done that before. I'm not sure they're doing that well. Some in the back there are doing okay. Um, I neglected, neglected to keep on top of this stupid little, it's a little tiny black speck of a beetle that loves, there's one right there, um, that loves to get on your tomato plants and chew little holes in it. So uh, it could be that they just got away from me and usually I'll have a few leaves on the bottom that are kind of destroyed and the rest of the plant is fine and my tomatoes are fine. But uh, anyway, like I said, next year I think I'll move my tomatoes into the front because I'm growing more now and I just need more room. I've let, I've let my, my carrots from last year, the Canada variety, as well as I think it's called either rain, I think it's maybe rainbow um, uh, variety of uh, Swiss chard. So there's yellow and red and kind of a pinky. Let them go to seed so that I'll have lots of seed for next year. And in that bed over there I just have um, beets and chard and carrots and I usually keep them covered with uh, with curtains to keep the bugs out. I just got them in the second hand store and um, it seems to let the water through and keeps those darn flying bugs off of my uh, kale and other things that they like to eat. And uh, there's the rest of my tomatoes. This here is the tail end of my, my uh, lettuce patch. My guinea pigs have been gobbling it all up. 
And I have some wild things growing in here as well. I have some miner's lettuce and uh, chickweed that my piggies like to eat. And um, I've planted some new, new uh, romaine in there once the other uh, lettuce has come out. And once the piggies and we eat all of this, this is going to be my winter garden where I have my broccoli in here and I'll be putting in Brussels sprouts. And um, they'll be covered with, uh, with the curtain as well to keep the white butterfly away. And I'll have Brussels sprouts next, next term. My garlic's doing really well. Ed pointed out the last time he was here that I had scapes already. My garlic comes up pretty early and I mulch it. And I think it, because of that, it gets ahead at least six inches ahead of friends gardens and so it's been doing it's been doing very well and like I said the pool takes up a lot of real estate but I wouldn't be without it because I like to do laps and <laughs> I'm looking forward to that the pool is almost ready to uh, to get going and uh, that is the end of my yard um, I have a side garden that has a fig in it. Uh, nothing really grows over there well except for pole beans. Um, so next year I'll be putting my pole beans over there and freeing this up for something else. And uh, I think I think you've seen everything that's worth mentioning here. So anyway, um, it's nice to see you all. I miss you all and I look forward to sometime soon. If Jane is right, hopefully in the fall we'll be able to get together again.